Okay, this is a rig we're doing today for place. Um, it's an amazing rig. Um, me and Graham years ago, I used to remember you going to a hotel and uh, you couldn't find a coat hanger because we used to use these coat hangers and catch place many, many years ago. Well, they've adapted the coat hanger into this, which is a spreader boom. When I first see one, I thought, my God, this is 20 years old. But I can't knock it. They catch fish and they're brilliant. And there's more and more different types of them being made. You can buy them now from Tronics and they've got full beads all along here, both sides. They're out of stock at the moment, so I haven't got any in the shop. But both sides, they're full of beads and they're longer and they're, and they're black and yellow and greens and all kinds of colours. Fantastic. But this is one I made up this morning because Graham was coming. I've got a cannonball in the middle. Um, these retract, so obviously it's nice to put in your tackle box. You can, the, the small ones like this, that's how they are. You just whiz them out and they make a spreader. So a little bit better than the old coat hanger, aren't they? Um, just like that, you just pull it each end and uh, they'll come out to the middle. Two seconds, look, how's that? Perfect. Um, anyway, I use George's Super Spinners because they're easy and it saves a lot of time. I've found two ways with these. You've got one on here, that's the conventional way, and to here I've got 25 pound amnesia and a little blade on there just for attraction. That's the conventional way, if you can see. But I've also caught fish this way, where I just attach it on the side so it spins and scuffs the bottom. I don't know if you can see, so it'll go round and just plant my hook just underneath it. And that can work really well sometimes. It's not probably how you're supposed to use them, but it's just good because it'll just spin round and it'll just attract, you know. And you must keep them fairly level. And also, whatever you do, they mustn't touch because if they touch, you're gonna to get tangled. So obviously you, you work it out so they won't touch each other. And when you drop it down, be a little bit careful. But it's amazing how they work. I think they bump the bottom, the cannonball hits the bottom, the whole thing's moving, as you can see. It's making noise on the bottom, as you can see. If it's, as you're coming through the tide, it's probably rattling. You used to do a thing called booby beads, and I think they still make them now. And you've got to admit, they were amazing. I mean, you didn't think they'd work, but what they'd done was this, permanently rattling and noise. And I'm sure that's what attracts, as well as being inquisitive, this noise will attract place and, and fish of, you know, fish in general. So really good. But as I say, when me and Graham used to use these, they weren't quite as good as this. They were a little bit longer as well, Graham, if I remember. <laughs> Fantastic things. But we use the cannonball again because it don't get hung up on the bottom so much. And out of Eastbourne, out about six miles, there's so many places out there at the moment. And all you do is just bump this, you just drift through and you go up the drift and down, and they're catching huge amounts of place. I've never known so many about, and I've been around for a long time here, and even on the beaches, it's just full of place, you know, it's just a, they, they, as a species, they've made a real big comeback at the moment, you know, and they're beautiful, the big spotties, nothing better. Another little tip I've tried, um, I'm showing you a large one, because basically for the camera, but I've tried small wedges, and uh, I've sort of put the wedge on, I've got rid of the, the treble hook, from there, and put a little swivel in there and a small bit of amnesia, about 20 pound, a small hook. And I find that the wedge, the smaller ones, they kick up the sand. And I've had some great um, results on out with my mate, placing out by the tower. I've had some terrific results with the wedge. And I put the wedge on, it also works well on a down tide rig, on the, on the bottom, on the last hook. You put that in front of it. And I don't know if it's the sound or whether it just kicks up that sand and obviously spoons are brilliant. White spoons, silver spoons. Uh, didn't mention them, but they're marvellous spoons. And it's a thing, again, that you don't think it's gonna work, but they're deadly, they're absolutely deadly. And maybe the spoon's more than the beads, to be honest with you. Um, make sure that your baits are balanced as well. You don't really want a great big bait on that end, making it go like that, and one on the other. So about even with the baits is good. And uh, also, this here, the reason I leave this gap is because if you put a big ragworm up or a lugworm, you can put it up over the shank if you want. It gives you a bit of space there. And uh, you can use a little stop if you want to push it down. Quite, It's quite neatly, you know, it's quite easy. But most important is having your baits balanced because otherwise this thing will definitely tip. And it, I'm not saying it'll tangle, but it just won't work right, you know. But they t I'll tell you the other thing I've noticed with these, when you're fishing, you... <laughs> 
you reel up, you haven't got anything, and it feels so heavy. I said, because obviously all this in the tide, this wire work, is hard work to reel in. So sometimes you think you've got a place, and your mate gets a net, and you haven't got anything, which is quite funny, because it's just the weight sometimes, you know, it's incredible. But when you do get a good one, it really is hard work to reel it up, you know. So make sure you use a slow retrieve reel rather than a six to one ratio that's gonna be hard work, you know.